Hi there, my name is Alex, but I'm also known as Chibi Yuto, and welcome to another video review of Clamps Doujinshis. In this video, I'll be doing the review of Doujinshi number 18. It's a Doujinshi about Shurato. You may know Shurato by its English title, which is Legend of Heavenly Sphere Shurato, or simply Shurato. Shurato was a manga series written by Hiroshi Kawamoto that was ran in a, in a magazine called Shonen King from January 1988 to December of 1988, the same year. So basically, the serialization lasted for a whole year. Only two volumes were compiled, but it was popular enough to be adapted into a variety of media formats such as audio cassette tapes, OVA, and an anime TV series. According to Wikipedia, sorry for my sources, Shurato was one of the most popular shonen series of 1989. So it's no wonder that our dear club members were actually into it as well, and that's why they produced this doujinshi. This was released in October of 1989, only two months after their previous release, which was uh, Shoten number no. 4. It's not as complex or as refined in terms of design when you compare it to their Shoten series, but keep in mind that this was released in between Shoten 4 and 5, so it's like even though they were busy doing these two works, they still managed to find some time to release this, and let's not forget that they were already working as professional manga artists, they were already full-on Rigo Veda and probably already starting out with Niju Mensoni Onegai and some other small projects. So without further ado, let's check the review. So this is the front cover. This is the doujinshi title, uh, Watashi no Himitsu Heiki, which in English means um, my secret weapon. Here behind it, you see the word uh, Shurato. There is uh, some text blurb here, which I can tell. And the cover has a nice metallic uh, finishing to it. It's really nice. This is the back cover. Uh, so you see a slight continuation of the front cover here, then the uh, characters in chibi format, some summary from Clamp, uh, Clamp Books 18 at the bottom. This is the book spine, so you have the, the title again, and Clamp Books number 18. So it's not a very thick book. When you open it, there is this color spread, and you see something like that too at the very last page. So it's the beginning and the, at the, and the ending of the book. Uh, there isn't any official um, confirmation or credit for the whoever did the cover art, but I would say it was Mokona Papa. And for the illustration, I am not completely sure. It, it kind of looks like Tamayo Akiyama. So I, but I can't really tell. Here we have the index. So each member contributed with one or more um, comic. And we have, uh, after a long time, we have some guest artists here at this section. This is the, um, some technical information. It was released on October 29 of 1989. So the first story is by Tamayo Akiyama and you will notice that the stories here are very short. Like this one is only two pages, it ends here already. Then this one is by um, Lisa Say. And it ends here, so only three pages. Uh, then we have one page by Mick Nikoi, so very short story. Uh, yet another one by Lisa Say, 
another short story, two pages. They are mostly gag stories so far. Then uh, we have Sena now. Three pages. Lisa Say again. And this one by Mick Nikoi. This one and, and the right at the right. Then over here, uh, where the color page changes, we have the guest artist section. So it's a collection of four stories by guest artists. So they're not drawn by Clump, and I I don't really know their names. Here we have a novel called Roman Holiday. I think it's nice that the color changes for the guest artist section. And this is the final story for the guest artist, which is a novel as well. Then back to clan members, we have Tamayo Akiyama here, her contribution, two pages only. Then uh, a novel as usual for Satsuki Igarashi. Again, not sure if she actually drew these uh, small cuts illustrations. They don't say anything, so it could well be her. Then, well, we see chibi characters. So yeah, of course, this is by Mik Nekoi again. Still Mik Nekoi. Quite a longish comic this time. I think this is the longest comic yet. Maybe the last one will be longer, which we'll get to it. And it ends here. And here, let's turn it this way. Behold, we have the announcement for Shoten 5. Here it says that. Um, these are the, the the main the new characters that will appear in Shoten Five. Uh, we have our beloved trio uh, Subaru, Seishiro, and Hokuto. There are some uh, data about uh, their age and their um, names and and jobs, I think. Uh, and it's uh, an advertisement for Shoten Five, who would which would come out in December two months after this was released. Uh, this was the first official uh, Tokyo Babylon illustration. Well, it was not yet called Tokyo Babylon, but this was the first time that they, um, they released an illustration for these three characters. Um, and it's interesting to notice that they're all wearing gloves. So not only Tsubaru, but Hokuto as well. And Quite surprisingly, Seishiro as well is wearing a glove. Uh, so this was pretty exciting. They were really trying to um, uh, build, build some expectation for it. So here we have the traditional section called staff, where they introduce themselves and they usually select a character that would represent themselves. Um, they were seven members at the time, and this one, uh, it's not a member, uh, probably a guest artist, uh, leaving a comment or something, even though they have a special page for the guest artist, uh, so I don't know exactly, maybe it was just a character that they selected, I don't know. Um... On this page, there, there are some stories and things that they wanted to share. So I, I couldn't really understand all of it, but this seems like some uh, essay or small story about their summer trip or the, it has to do with, with sports and um, what's kind of like 
the hobby of each one of the clan members, what they will, what they like to do when they're at the beach. This is me assuming completely. For instance, here it's, it uh, appears that Satsuki's garashi is really good at table tennis and Okawa is uh, really good at tennis and then there's some members that are not so good at all and then they just like uh, looking for uh, seashells or I don't know uh, creatures and, and well this is just me assuming I'm not very sure at all about this uh, but it certainly looks like a story about them at the beach or during summer holiday and at the bottom um, this is a story saying that uh, Lisa say would start living by herself uh, I think they were living together and she moved out and um, they were saying that she was she was working on the, her own doujinshi which is called pride and I have it right here uh, so let me show you this one it's a is a solo doujinshi by by Lisa say it features uh, her characters from Shoten and uh, some other original story I think no it's mostly the the Shoten couple yeah and there are contributions from from the other clan members so each clan member uh, contributed with the story so uh, it's a pretty nice uh, uh, doujinshi work and but it's not a clan doujinshi so it's not considered to be one of the 22 that they released under the name of clamp even though they're here it's just that they were uh, involved in the making of it but it's uh, it is uh, definitely considered um, Lisa say doujinshi so they were saying here that she was uh, about to work on it or had already worked on it I'm not sure of the details uh, and there's some advertisement at the bottom here I couldn't really tell something that would be made um, by Satsuki or oh, sorry by Okawa and Nikoi together uh, here we have the guest comments so the guest artist left some comment and some drawings for them and the last part of this section is an ad for combination uh, which is Lisa Say's work so I'm assuming they were advertising for oh yeah the cassette tape um, so yeah there is a this is an audio drama that was released uh, back then and the script for it was actually written by Okawa Nanase and this is really intriguing because it, it seems as though the cassette tape came out even before the the actual tonka bones which is really unusual uh, I'm not very familiar of the timeline here but uh, it seems as though the cassette tape was uh, released first uh, but I would have to look it out uh, I have to look it up I, I'm not really sure of that the combination uh, is definitely considered uh, Lisa Say's work, not Clamp. Uh, they were involved, but when she left uh, the group, she took the title with her because it was uh, mostly her idea or her work to begin with. Then back to the stories, we have this novel by Okawa Nanase. So you have like a pinna poster, which opens up like this and the, the the novel is written on uh, this beautiful illustration and again it is not clear who drew it um, it might as well have has had been Okawa herself but uh, it could be one of the other members we don't know how exactly Okawa's style is this is the back side is just an illustration so there's no tax on it I would say this is a very unusual format for Okawa 
to put the text uh, on an illustration which turns out to be a pinup poster like that so this is pretty cool and then lastly closing the book with all her glory we have Mokona Papa and this seems not to be a humorous uh, story at all it seems to be a very uh, dark and serious one and I think it's the the largest comic we've got looks really nice I think it's the same size as Nikoi's or a little bigger I'm not sure and it ends here the final page and as I said uh, the last page is also a color spread closing the book which seems to be from the same person that drew the this one so uh, one thing to say about this story is that this book was released in October of um, 1989 and on April of the following year here April of 1990 Klein published a one-shot about Shurato here in Comic Genki uh, Comic Genki is the, no, well, actually new type Comic Genki, uh, is the same magazine that ran Niju Mensoni Onegai and Dukarion. So there was a, a one shot at this, um, at this issue and it's pretty similar to the Doujinshi we've just saw, uh, that last story is also by Mokona Papa and um, it just goes to show that the timeline here is very uh, suggestive that it suggests that they were um, maybe invited by Komi Genki to to write a, a one-shot based on the I don't know the success of this doujinshi because this was in October and this was in April of the following year so it's a very short um, gap and it could have been a result of this doujinshi or it might just well be clamp uh, pitching uh, one shot for for the magazine we uh, we don't have that information uh, but it's definitely uh, there's a very small gap between the two releases just a few months apart uh, so this is this concludes the review and uh, as we've seen it's mostly a collection of short stories most of them uh, gag comics but with a couple at the ending there it seems to be more serious um, we have contributions from all the members but Sena now herself you see that she only had one story uh, while the others either had uh, more stories or longer ones so and she would be the next clan member to 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 leave the group and this can be an indication of her uh, slowly uh, uh, moving out of clamp but she would still be present in a few more uh, doujinshis thank you so much for watching these and my previous videos as well i hope you're liking them and i would like to invite you all to check my website for more clamp news the address is chibiyuto.com. Uh, I hope you pay me a visit and until next time.